and welcome to the episode 343 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we have a first gig in the South, a scouting for a first album and an OK first compilation. Let's see. Let's open with the first Beatles show in the South of England, happened on the 9th of December 1961. The lads, still with Pete Best on drums, performed the first show at the Palais Barum in Aldershot and the second at the Blue Gardenia Club in London. The results left something to be desired, though. The Aldershot event had been organized by Liverpool promoter Sam Leach on a simple premise. Since no London promoter would come to Liverpool to check out the music scene there, why not bringing Liverpool to London? The problem was that Aldershot is a bit off the beaten track, 37 miles 60 kilometers, south of London, near a military base. Not only that, but a conspicuous newspaper advertisement planned by Leach did not appear. The newspaper had decided not to accept the cheque because Leach was not a regular advertiser and Leach couldn't be reached in time to postpone the event. The resulting battle of the bands between the Beatles and the London band Ivor J and the J Walkers attracted only 18 viewers. For the Beatles, this was hardly satisfying, especially after nine hours spent packed in a van for the road trip from Liverpool. But they performed their set anyway. At the end of the evening, at 1 am, the band made enough of a nuisance of themselves to be kicked out of the Palais Barum by the local police. The London gig, later into the night, was nothing but an impromptu performance at the semi illicit Soho club run by Brian Cassar, former singer of Liverpool band Cass and the Casanovas. It is unclear whether George Harrison did or did not take part to this display of youthful exuberance. After the concert, at around 3 am, the party had nothing else to do but returning to Liverpool, arriving at around midday. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, performed a nighttime gig at the Cavern Club. The concert was memorable because producer George Martin and his assistant Judy Lockhart Smith were in the attendance. Martin had decided to scout the location to decide whether he could actually record the Beatles live in Liverpool and present that live album as the band's first LP. Nothing came of it, but Martin's comments about the foremost another band on the bill, along with the Blue Jeans and the Zenith Six jazz band, caused Brian Epstein to offer them a management contract. In 1963, the Beatles performed at the Odeon Cinema in South Hand on Sea for their current British tour. Before the show, a BBC crew interviewed them in their dressing room. In 1964, it was Paul McCartney's turn to visit Ringo Starr in the hospital, after the latter's operation to have his tonsils removed. As it had happened yesterday, security concerns became even more pressing for the hospital, with the added beetle becoming a source of extra tension for the staff. Also today, George Harrison and his wife Patty took a plane to the Bahamas for a quick holiday. On the 9th of December 1965, the Beatles performed at the Audience Cinema in Birmingham for their 1965 UK tour. The event was memorable just because the band was driven through a massive thunderstorm to reach the venue. On this date in 1966, instead, EMI decided to release the first-ever Beatles compilation on the UK market, an LP called A Collection of Beatles Holdies. It was a 16-track album, containing eight songs previously available only in mono, as single releases, and only one song, Bad Boy, previously unreleased on the UK market. The album failed to reach the number one spot, 
the first Beatles LP not to do so. The honor spot was awarded to the Sound of Music original soundtrack for that Christmas. Meanwhile, in Abbey Road, the Beatles reconvened at the EMI Studios between 2.30 and 10 pm. They kept on working on Strawberry Fields forever. Take 25 was finally produced, editing together Take 15 and Take 24. After that, the band overdubbed all kinds of instruments and studio tricks on the rhythm track, including backward recordings of cymbals and a swore mandal, an Indian instrument similar to a table harp. The song was abandoned for the moment to give George Martin the chance to produce a trumpet and cello score. One thing that has not been abandoned is this podcast, and an idea on what will come next. I am already working on it, and here's your chance to ease my work and improve my results. Head to www.simonmas.com support and do any of the things listed there to support my music-related contents. Share it, talk about it with your friends, review it, make a donation, acquire the NFTs with the deluxe version of this podcast. You decide. You can also do nothing at all, but wouldn't you feel a certain warmth inside if you did something instead? Thank you for any support you might want to give. Let's close the episode with a quick recount of the events of the 9th of December 1967. Ringo Starr was in Rome, Italy, for the shooting of Candy. On this date, the shooting was at the soundstage of the Income Film Studios, for an interior scene set in the basement of Richard Barton's house. Nothing much came of the film, but hey, everyone's got to start somewhere. That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll narrate how John Lennon finally left Hamburg and much more. Don't miss the episode. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.